What is up guys? I hope you all are having a fantastic day. If you're new, welcome to Flame Zone, where we discuss all things Calgary Flames. Today we're discussing the Flames' first line forward and left winger Johnny Gaudreau. With the 104th overall pick in the 4th round of the 2011 NHL Entry Draft, the Calgary Flames selected Gaudreau, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that they're happy with the pick. Falling because of his size, Goudreau has had a great past four seasons with the Flames, especially considering his draft position. In 2016-17, Goudreau potted 18 goals and 61 points in 72 games played, which was a down year from his other two seasons in the NHL. It's also important to note he missed 10 games due to injury that season, which contributed to the low regular season point totals. That season, the Flames made the playoffs, and in four games played, Goudreau had two assists and two total points. Considering Goudreau was the Flames' undisputed best player at the time, I think it's reasonable to say that he had a poor postseason, as he failed to record a single goal. The lack of production from Goudreau was one of the major factors of the Flames being swept by the Ducks that season. After disappointment in the playoffs, Goudreau followed the 2016-17 season up with a bounce-back 2017-18 season. In 80 games played, Goudreau scored 24 four goals and 84 points and was above a point per game for the first time in his career. However, the Flames failed to make the playoffs due to reasons I could cover in a future video. In the 2018-19 season that followed, Gaudreau elevated his play to another level, recording career highs in almost every category. In 82 games played, Gaudreau scored 36 goals and 99 points. This kind of production drew the interest of a lot of fans league-wide, and Gaudreau was regarded as one of the league's best forwards. Overall, it was a monster season by both the Flames and Gaudreau, and I think it was really too bad that Gaudreau didn't get 100 points last year. Since the Flames finished first in the West with 107 points, they were set to face the Colorado Avalanche, a wildcard team that barely made the playoffs. It should be an easy series for the Flames, right? Our offense will be able to score at will, right? Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan will lead the Flames on a great playoff run, right? Wrong. After winning the first game 4-0, the Flames lost the next four games. Nathan McKinnon, the other player who recorded 99 points that season, played phenomenally, and Kale McCarr, who was from Calgary, played great for a rookie, playing against his hometown team in the playoffs. What about Johnny Gaudreau, you ask? Well, let's just say it wasn't a great series for him. In five games played, Gaudreau only had a single assist. Yeah, not the kind of production you would expect from someone who scored 99 points in the regular season. This was where the conversation about Goudreau really started to shift. People began questioning if he was built for the playoffs, as the last time Goudreau scored a goal in the playoffs was in 2014-15. While hockey is a team sport and it isn't Goudreau's fault alone, there is no getting around those ugly playoff numbers. This season, Goudreau definitely struggled offensively. Before the All-Star break, Gaudreau recorded only 13 goals and 38 points in 50 games played. After the All-Star break, Gaudreau stepped up his game, scoring 5 goals and 20 points in 20 games played. Before the All-Star break, Gaudreau was on pace to score 62 points. However, because of this increase in production, Gaudreau was on pace for about 70 points after the season paused. Gaudreau finished off the season with 18 goals and 58 points in 70 games played. The Flames were also in a playoff spot before the stoppage and had a great opportunity to play the Edmonton Oilers in what many dubbed the greatest rivalry in hockey. Since the series would be a rivalry, I think it's fair to say that the intensity, passion, and desperation levels would have gone up, resulting in a possible increase in production from Gaudreau. In the regular season, Gaudreau produced at a point per game against the Oilers, recording one goal and three assists for four points in four games played. Over the course of the season, Gaudreau was mentioned in a lot of trade rumors and will continue to be linked to rumors. However, I personally don't think he'll be traded. Considering Gaudreau has a great cap hit of only $6.75 million until 2022, I can't see the Flames trading him. While Matthew Kachuk, Calgary's second line left wing, had a better season than Gaudreau, I can't see him replacing the undersized winger. Overall, I think Gaudreau can definitely bounce back from this season and I can see him score about 25 to 30 goals and 70 to 80 points next year, especially if his line mates can bounce back as well. Although many see Monaghan and Lindholm as secondary pieces to that first line, I think the three feed off each other's confidence and chemistry, which is why the trio had such a great season last year. When all three guys are clicking, all three of their points totals go up. Overall, I think Goudreau will have every chance to bounce back next year. And there you have it, that's the player profile for Johnny Goudreau. I will be releasing other content in the coming days, so stay tuned for that stuff. If you guys have anything to say, please leave it down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I hope you guys have a great day, stay safe and stay home, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.